The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Friday, last day of the week, uh, the 14th of October. We're looking at the Dow at uh, 10.06 a.m., trading up 65 at 30,101. It actually ran from yesterday's low of 28,660 in the dreaded H pattern. It took out the left side low of the, uh, was that the 30, 29th of September, 30th of September. And uh, that arch formation went underneath and closed very sharply above in the inside track repellent zone. And today we've spiked above and we're coming back into that zone. So I'm going to be, this is Tiger Technicians Hour, uh, Friday edition. <clears throat> and the Friday edition invariably is where we go into deeper depth in the Chapman Waivers, like an educational show. Friday is Education Day for the Chapman Waivers. Many, many Chapman waivers out there and get emails all the time saying, was that a D? Was that, you know, questions about it. <clears throat> I think the most important question here for a lot of newbies to the Chapman wave is, when you start the count, well, that huge move that made a low yesterday and a high, the rule of the Chapman wave is that the low bar cannot be the high bar as well. In other words, you can't count that as a leg G to the downside and this is an A to the upside. Only in the Chapman Wave instant restart at peak D does that occur. Eyes glaze over. That's what would happen to me. But we'll explain it as we move along. So today we went to a higher high than yesterday. That starts your leg A. Why? Because it's on the right side of the low bar. That means you can actually call it a low. You couldn't call this the, the low. It is a low, but not the low. Or maybe a J low. No, it's a G low. So what we're looking at here is that we've bounced above the Chapman Wave inside track. And uh, how it holds through the rest of the day is going to be important. And to the aspect that I like to talk about, and that is there are takeoff moments where the power of the move to the upside. Yesterday, basically, it was a three-in-one day. I'll talk about that in a moment. But there are times where the takeoff is so powerful that there is concurrently a huge move down from an indicator that's the emotional indicator, that's the VIX index, I'll get to that in a moment, at the same time as the pattern that's unfolding is possibly making a V-shaped formation. There cannot be a V-shaped formation here because you've already got this arch. You would have to take it out and that would be like a bumpy, that would be like the lowercase h goes to a cup formation in the Chapman Wave. That's a technique that I developed years after I found out about the dreaded H pattern that I talked about, I mean, for 30, 40 years. Uh, <clears throat> and then I realized that if it's a successful move that within two to three bars is taken out the left side low but rallied sharply above, if that move actually triggers a buy signal in the MACD, the stochastic and other indicators or patterns, and closes above the left side high, in this case, 30,464, that was the high of the 30th? No, that was the high of the 5th of October. Um, that would say, you know what, now you can go all the way to the next uh, uh, peak or doji candle or moving average or Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, whatever it is on the upside that says that's the next barrier, and that would be 31,020. <clears throat> so this is a different pattern. That's the reason why two things happened yesterday. One is very seldom do you make a very serious low. I'm talking about a low that would be the equivalent of, oh, that was the high would be the equivalent of this low that was made with a doji candle on the 17th of June at 29,653. You see how it just, that it looks like a V-shaped pattern, even though it gave it back and had to restart again in mid-July. But that is the V-shaped pattern, and that makes a powerful move, 29,653, 2,200 points up to 31,885. So there's a difference here. 
This is a different pattern. And that's the reason why now I'll talk about the three sessions yesterday. There was a session, actually it was four, because prior to the market, the Dow was the futures. Let's go to the futures, YM. The futures were up huge um, after the Wednesday kind of nebbishy uh, close under the nine period moving average. It, it was up about mm, 300 points at some stage. And then the eighth, uh, 830 news comes out with the uh, just the inflation just smack the Dow. Whoosh, it comes down. The futures come down, goes all the way, but held. And this is really a very important 28. I wonder if it's still that because it's a smoothing average. 28635 was the low of the third, and 28671 was the, the low yesterday. So a number of things were happening. So that was one session, a rally up and a whopper of a move down. Then there was another session where it started to find support, support. Um, you know, when you're looking, I'm, go, I'm going to go to the E-mini. Um, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, OK, OK, I've got a, a, just a real quick trade. I've got my show coming up very soon. And I, I you know, grabbed the, uh, the E-mini at 35.15 about what is it uh, what was the low 35.15 was one wasn't it two so uh, about 13 points off the low and everything's working and then i'm looking at the the program the the the, 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 the platform and it's got the numbers are this is up and down and i can't i'm making i'm losing i'm losing I, i'm looking at so but wait a minute I'm, I'm in why why is it doing that so within uh, a very short moment, I said, I, I don't even know what's going on. I, I'm looking at the price, and the price is it must be higher. And the, So I get out. And, yep, okay. So I, I get out, and I, I, I make money. But I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, well, okay, if this this is a Thursday, and that kind of bugged me. I thought, Thursday? I've, I've In all my years, watching the market almost every day, as much, even when I'm overseas, I, I tend to, if I, I have a, an instrument, if I have, the capacity, I'm, I'm following the market um, hour by hour, whatever it is. Um, but I've never, I remember once there was a, it was either a Tuesday or a Thursday where the Dow made a very significant low and had a fabulous move up for, for weeks. That was very unusual. Usually it's a Monday or a, or a Friday. Remember Friday, the March the 6th, uh, we bought the diamonds back in 2009, right at the low. We actually bought the uh, the options then, and then went and almost a week later we, we, we had huge gains and we kept them but we also bought the, the diamonds um, and the, uh, no I, was that the uh, two, no no March March 2009 I believe we actually bought the, the diamonds right at the low 56 something or other if I remember okay, unbelievable so um, anyway with that in mind I'm saying to myself okay that's one session and then all of a sudden, there's another session where the, where the futures and the market, now the market's open and the market's starting to come back. Um, and it's looking good. And it's starting now it's down 106 points. And I'm doing my show and I'm thinking it's getting better and better. And that's a second part. Then there's a third part where I'm thinking, OK, uh, do I, you know, what do we go back in time? What do you hear? And uh, all of a sudden, zoop, there was a 400-point gain. And that was the first session. Then there was another session all day where it doubled the gain, and we closed up 800 points. So that's usurped a lot of upside energy just for the moment. Technical Friday, I'll be back. I want to talk about Dow's uh, E-Money's down 38, the E-Money of the S&P. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, 
Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back, and the Dow is down 117, S&P is 37. I would have preferred if the Dow was actually down 280 right now and the S&P down 37. Uh, we'll see what happens. Now, what we're looking at is, so gold is, well, first of all, so that was the four sessions yesterday. It turns out the E-mini went from what was it, uh, that 35, was it 35, the 02-ish level to a high this morning of, it's hard to believe, let me just get it, I'll just do the continuous contract, that's quicker, of 37, 33, <laughs> 200 and 23 points high. Anyway, so that's that. That's history. We're done. Okay. Now what we're looking at is what happens now. Well, if you look at the candle that we we, we have right now, this is um, at in the E mini. It tried to get above the 14 period moving average. It actually danced around it back in uh, early October when it had that big spike. Now look at this chapter weight inside track channel. It it went close to it yesterday and then ran up. Look at the NQ on oh, this purely technical Friday. So what we've got in the NQ is this Chapman wave inside track. Let me just do this. I'm going to open up. This is the daily chart. Just open up so you can see it. Let's just do it over there. Made a peak E in August. Uh, above, you remember, I made a big deal about the 200-period exponential moving average. It tried to climb above it, but that mag that repellent zone was so strong, it got pulled back, and it, uh, it pulled back. And if you look at the extension, the, I, I've mentioned this very often. I've added to, I don't know about whether it's standard on, on the Fibonacci, but I, I've added to this particular tool that I have a 300, 200 and 300% uh, expan expansions. Now, it's amazing because yesterday it went to exactly 300%. The Chapman Wave inside track down channel right here, this has been this incredible support every time it's gone to it and it's been propelled above it and it's stalled above the 14 period exponential moving average, the black wavy line over there. It did it exactly, uh, this, uh, it did it three times back on the early October. To, uh, yesterday went right to the lower trough E at about 10, just about 10,500 and then spiraled up to today's high of 
11,253.50, right at the the black 14 period moving average is 11,219. And look what happened. It pulled back sharply from that. So all the things that I would love to look at as key support levels, you've got your 300% expansion. How important is that? Well, if I remember correctly, I don't know if I've still got it on there because I like to clean up the charts after they've already done their job. Um, right here, there we go. This is the 10-minute E-mini, and I had drawn in from the low yesterday. What exactly was this? So this is the E-mini 10-minute chart. The low yesterday, the doji candle low at 940, was 3502.00, round number, and then went peak A, B, C, D. Remember the Chapman Wave methodology? You, the, uh, buy signal should be upgraded to a buy mode, which should take you to at least, at least a peak D. And it went to the D, then it stalled, and it made this cup formation, had another A, B, C, and a D. And if you measure this D, at um, ten, uh, the um, it was last night just before midnight to today at uh, 3 a.m. I wasn't uh, up at that point. I was just uh, when I woke up when I was up at 5:45 this morning. Started notating what I'd missed. Yeah, look the vertical line from this move in the 10-minute chart. At 23:50, that's 11:50 uh, last night. Uh, went to 37.15.50. The MACD and stochastic were quite good, but look what happened when it retested that exact level right here. Uh, it didn't quite take out the the 37.15.50 level. It stopped right there. And look, the MACD was weaker and the stochastic couldn't get above 80% and then reversed. And then what did it do? It came back down to the 200 period moving average, rallied, had this, this news... Uh, uh, let's say, I don't know what it was, but there was some news at 8.30 that said the market said, oh, that was, can't remember now, uh, but it was a little bit more favorable, and then it made a peak C. This is, in the Chapman Wave, the, the spike that occurs after news events at 8.30 in the morning, that's where you get your single leg A up, or you can get a failure pattern. So basically, this isn't uh, this isn't a, an alternate count. This is a peak C, maybe a peak C1, C2, because once again, if you look at the left side, the technicals here and the technicals there, when it just failed to get above that peak C for a leg D, look how the on-balance volume turned down, and now we're starting to test all these levels that were uh, resistance, and now they support. So that's part of the Chapman Wave methodology, and I'm going back to where we were. Oh, someone asked me about that two-minute chart that I had here. Look at the symmetry between the left side. Oh, I didn't do that, did I? I forgot to. I, I thought I did, and maybe I took it out. Right here. Look at that arch formation at that peak E. Uh, let me draw it in like that. Oh, wrong way around. So let me draw it in like, yes, I am. Okay, so look at that arch formation right there. It's one of those days. Let's do it slowly. Going from there back to there. Right? Look at the symmetry from that peak E and then that left side low at about 8 o'clock this morning. Number of bars. Well, it took three bars before it actually took out that left side low that we were looking at. So the bar symmetry, part of the structure that I look at all the time, it's so easy to, to actually do this, either with a trend line or something like that. Um, and just... I've got colors and I got rectangles in trade station. They have the whole, the technical tools are fabulous uh, that you can use, uh, drawing tools, that is. Uh, other programs have something very similar. I don't know if all the programs have an arch. That's one of my favorite things. And it doesn't have to be an arch. You could draw it in as two vertical, uh, two uh, diagonal lines. Look, straight line up there. And then a straight line back down to where you think the target will be. That's fine. Uh, you know that you're thinking arch, but it doesn't matter. So look what happened. It gone to a trough C, then a trough D, and now trough E with down 49. This is after the spectacular move yesterday, up 100 and something, uh, 105, was it? Um, now this is what we're looking at, and you're starting to see deterioration. Now I want to go to something that, I was leading up to, but I'm going to first finish what I was talking about right here, because that the whole discussion right now revolves around this inside track support level. When it's tested this many times, I consider it important. 
In this particular case, the 300% was important, but the flat MACD and the stochastic um, under 20% yesterday, now it's a little bit above, it's just 20.71. And the on-balance volume was suggesting to me that there's probably still quite a bit of work to be done in the um, NQ, in the E-mini NASDAQ 100. Let's go back to the QQQ because that's what we're talking about. And it's pulled back 4.63 uh, at 264. So it's given back not a half, but a, a pretty good chunk of yesterday's gain. The low is 254.46. It ran up to 271. Uh, I mean, that's a yeah, a 20. It's almost a 10% gain in a single index. So it's given some of that back. So it's that context, these are the patterns that I'm looking at. I want you to finish up and say that gold, um, the, the the pattern we're looking at in gold. If you look at the weekly chart, the fact that the nine period moving average is still so far below the 14, it's just not a positive, it's a negative. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 208, S&P's down 49, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we've just had the uh, E-mini stop on its way down. Uh, it, it ran to the around about, let me just give you the exact figure. It ran to the 362800 level. Now, it's just, you see the, the pink nine-period moving average is trying to flatten out. The 14 is sitting up there. Uh, and it's been in a sell signal since right there, 928 at about 3708. And it's come down, as I said, to about the 30, uh, 3628 level. So uh, we'll see. Uh, this is exactly the moment that I would like to see myself uh, in terms of the patterns that I'm looking at some kind of support, and that'll say that the, the let me just get to it, there it is. <clears throat> and that would say that in the Dow, 
the pullback that we've seen hasn't taken out either the 14 period moving average support, which is at, uh, let's see what it's at right now. If I can just hit it correctly, there it is. 27, 29751. And the pink is just a little bit below that. So this is kind of where I would like to see some stabilization and maybe a sideways move towards the close. And if we start to get further bank uh, bank earnings out, on, I'll go to that in a moment, bank earnings out on Monday that are, are good, then that could help the market have another bounce. But so far, the pattern that I'm looking at, I'm going to give you, the, this is Technical Friday, so here we go. The technical pattern that I'm looking at is that after a sharp move down, let me put it on the side so that you can actually see what I'm looking at. After a sharp move down like that in the H pattern, remember I look at three patterns, straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, and a combination of one and two and one and three. This is one and two. Oh, sorry, one and three, the dreaded H where you take out the left side low and within two bars, I sometimes say three bars, but really two bars is best. It goes right back above that left side high and that says you've taken out the left side low. Now the resistance should be like a midpoint, a gap or a doji candle or a, a moving average or a chap wave trend line. Um, but if it takes out after making a peak A or a B failure pattern, which becomes a minus. If it takes out that previous high, this H pattern becomes a cup formation, and that's very positive. We haven't got that yet. We haven't got yet. We haven't got signs of it. There was an attempt, but I'm talking about a close above 30,054. Today's high is 30,428. Uh, very, very close, and that's a good sign. So this lowercase h, if it starts to stall and cannot get above, can make a lowercase m formation. I, I don't want to talk about that too much right now. We haven't even gotten there. But that m formation has a whole bunch of Chapman wave techniques that we talk about. Large, uh, large H, small H making the M pattern, taking out the left side low. When it does that, if it doesn't, I just... I don't want to go into that right now. There's no need for it. So in the meantime, what we are looking at is this is the MACD is good. The stochastic is okay at 43%. On balance, the volume is failing. It should be much higher. And the nine-period moving average is moving up. My, my thinking here is that by Wednesday of next week, if we don't plunge in the Dow below 29,500 in, in the interim close below that level, there's a chance that we could see by Wednesday or Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, the nine period moving average trying to go green above the pink. I don't know. That's just the thinking right now. Let's, yeah. So I also wanted to mention, talk about uh, a miss. Um, I had on Thursday a Dow option call, a 295 option call for October in place. It didn't even get close. And then on Friday, because of the massive move down and options, you know, by at 8.30, that's one thing. But at 9.30, when the market opens, that option could be anywhere. So I had to say, um, I, I, I'm going to cancel that. But the, the, actual, the actual call was, if I can go there, uh, DIA, this is the uh, October 295 call. Uh, with a Friday, October 21st option expiration. Buy under 365, this was Thursday, before 2 p.m., using a stop of 2.65. That's about 33%. That was your risk. Oh, it's an option, so you've got to understand you've got a much bigger risk. Um, uh, with over a week to go, uh, so uh, if it touches 296, and if uh, that will be great, and if long, at 560, take one off. Well, I, I canceled it. I had no idea what, what it would do. Well, the darn thing, here it is. This is this is it. This is the chart. I love to do the chart of the options when I do. I don't do them very often. Every once in a while we do it. We've had some fantastic success with it. Uh, but I don't do it very often. Look what happened. It op The darn thing opens at 1.68. The low is... 1.59 intraday it spiked to nine dollars and 35 cents 
I would say that's a pretty decent profit. Today, it hit $10.65 since it's trading right now, $7.25. So that's a miss. We all have misses. And, and, you know, what can you do? I just like to look ahead and say, okay, done. I'm out of it. I get upset. But I just I have to move on. Just move on. That was a fantastic opportunity. Dollar <laughs> sixty-five to nines. If you got out the close at eight forty-eight. Okay, enough with that. Let's get back to our markets. And what we're looking at here is within the context of the gold pulling back sharply. Uh, that's GC. This is a continuous gold contract pulling back. It's now down twenty at uh, sixteen fifty-seven. You can see that the little bit, just a couple of days of green on the nine period moving average has gone back to pink. The MACD was good. It's now just about across negative. Uh, it hasn't yet. Stochastic is kind of weak at 46. On balance volume is very weak. Look at the weekly chart. Trough D, there's a beautiful left side, right side arch formation. This is the cup symmetry that I talk about. Sometimes you can't take it from the top. Uh, in this case, you could start to do that. I could start to draw it right now, but we've already gone below the left side low of importance. But look what I did. I chose a particular candle. I said left side, right side, and it made the arch formation, went to a peak E. Look on the upside. Look at this incredible symmetry to the – to the folks, we know we talk about these FIB numbers. We talk about all sorts of things. How simple can it be when you count the number of bars on the left and you choose a particular bar? If you can't get the exact plumb line low or the plumb line high, you've got to choose another. I chose this particular candle right here. I usually choose some kind of a form of a doji candle if it's possible. That's the candle of the fourth of in the weekly chart, the week of uh, June the 4th at 1957. And there it is. And it goes to the high of the seventh of the week of the 7th of August. At 2142. Remember, those are continuous contracts, so and your numbers might change and the pattern. Nothing changes except the numbers. And in Chapman, if you go to, uh, you want to see a peak D, that was a peak D. Then there was a pullback to the trough F, and it turns up and it rallies and it rallies. And what does it do? It is two week, three weeks early, and it gets to 2107, just under the previous high in a peak E, and it comes down. Now look at the left side symmetry here. I chose a particular candle, and it did that to this particular low right here from that peak E high. But, in fact, this is very weak. The back is weak, the stochastic weak. It's attempting. It's trying desperately. Gold is attempting to find some kind of support, but it just it has trouble holding gains. It's not so much about the support. And look at silver. Silver... Um, ugly candle from that peak. What do you look for in the Chapman Wave of peak D? What do you look for? Bar symmetry. You got that to the peak D under the 200 period moving average, pulling back. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 127. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So just to sum up that little uh, preamble that spoke about uh, the pattern, lowercase h goes to lowercase m if it starts to fail and cannot get above that F side high. For the Dow, just real quickly, let me do this. For the Dow, I'll give you the numbers. The Dow needs to close decisively above 30,454. I'd say 30,500, a close. The 50-period uh, moving average, yeah, that comes into effect, but... <clears throat> I think the technicals already improve if that happens. The S&P, SPX, there it is. The S&P needs to close. This is going to be tougher. It needs to close above 38.30. It's trading at 36.22. That's almost 200 points. That's going to be tough. So this is, it was a spectacular move yesterday. Is it a one-off? You know, markets like to repeat the same pattern for at least two or three times doesn't usually happen four times, so we'll see it's happened a few times already, but at least two significantly that looked very much like yesterday. Not as big, but it looked the same. Uh, the QQQ, that's going to have to move very, very sharply. It's a 263 uh, right now. It got repelled to 271. Uh, just on a very short-term basis, it'll be very good action if it can fill the gap to go towards 278. doesn't even have to go above the left side high, but that's what's needed. You're looking at the XLK. I want you to do that. The XLK is trading uh, down, sharply down. This is the S&P Select Tiger Spider Fund. And look at this beautiful channel. Um, and it's been stuck in this channel for a long time. And at 117, it really, the high today is 121. It needs to get to the one. Actually, it needs to get to the 125s by Wednesday of next week to say, hey, I've got a tremendous amount of energy. Now, I wanted to do this because I was asked about it, and I, I forgot about it in the first seg segment. The VIX index, I've been mentioning this for so long now. The VIX index is trading at point nine, up 0.91 at 32.95. We've got Friday. The, the close today is going to be so important on the volatility index. Why? Because it is stuck in the chapter wave inside track repellent zone. It's gone above it. It's gone to 34.88 three weeks ago. This week it went uh, it went to uh, th the 34s, but it couldn't break it. And here it is at 32.82. So at the moment, I'm just saying, holding with the MACD in the weekly chart strong, the stochastic now at 76%, very close to 80%. And the nine period moving average is still very much above the 14 period moving average. The VIX, and that was the question I had. Uh, uh, Basil, can you look at the VIX? Yes, the VIX index is saying to me that the intensity and the, you know, the, the numbers on, on the, uh, either the, the sell side or the short side or the people that are getting out of the market, these are huge numbers. There was one number that was a, a record in record keeping. They've never seen this number of people uh, uh, just really afraid of getting out of the market. So at this particular point, that VIX index is saying some kind of insurance is absolutely necessary, number one. And number two, within the context of insurance, 
it isn't just insurance because look how strong the 9 is above the 14 in the daily chart of the VIX. And this candle right now at the high of the day, uh, or very close to the high, with the MACD flat, and I'm measuring the, the vertical move from uh, the around about 29th, 30th of September to where we are, where we were three days ago. The MACD is not as good, but it's still okay. The stochastic is not as good. It's under 80%. So this is the moment that you, if anything is going to happen, you need to see the volatility index slide sharply into the 29s and then the 28s as the market persistent. And today is really a critical day because that follow through from the V-shaped pattern would have had either a gap up today and a spectacular move 300, 400 points up, or we would have had a little bit of a pullback and buyers would have just come in and would be shooting the upside. There's a lot of uncertainty. Part of that uncertainty also happens to be, so the VIX index is giving us some clue, and XLF, I want to see the XL, better not type that, XLF, the S&P Select Financials, XLF, there it is. Uh, pull back from a high, it had a nice bounce. This one also went to the three, oh, well, no, it hasn't gone to 300%. Uh, 261. Okay, so this hit 29.59 as the low yesterday and screamed up from 29.59 to 32.19. That's a spectacular move in one fell swoop. But that weekly chart has already for three weeks taken out the left side low of July. And I'm watching this. I want to see the XLF. The I need to see the financials doing really well. I want to see this XLF by maybe Wednesday, Thursday of next week, not under 30, but more likely over 30 32.75. Um, we'll see about that. What City came out with earnings today. Uh, it had a big pop, and now it's pulling back. It's up 24 cents after hitting 44 cents. We're looking at uh, the other thing is the IAI, the broker-dealer index, um, gave back huge, huge gains from yesterday. It's down two at 87.01. So the things I'm looking at here are saying, mm, not ready for prime time yet. So that's a very important thing to me. Question about AVEO. I haven't gotten to crude oil yet, but I'll do AVEO. Yes, remember the Chapman wave? We're looking for a leg D and then a peak D. Well, this is a leg D above the cup formation right there. We've been talking about that. The MACD turned up. The 9 went over the 14-period moving average. Stochastic is, is, is at 72%. Not great. On balance volume is a little bit overbought. Leg F in the weekly AVEO pharmaceuticals. Uh, vascular endothelial growth factor, receptor, well, okay, over my head, teresign, kinase inhibitor, whatever it is, is doing extremely well, up 7% today, up 68 cents at 10.18. Yes, I like it, but this little gap, I, in, a, in a biotech, you expect gaps very often to be filled, so it needs to hold 950 into Tuesday. And if it does that, and has an attempt in the next, between this afternoon and Monday, to actually move the high today is 10.30. If it can even touch 10.31 once more, that's starting to raise the base and say even with the market starting to weaken, this is in its own orbit, and that is because the 12.15 Fed uh, Wallace speech. Oh, is it 12.15 today? The reason we're making new highs on the way. Um, I, yeah, I don't know anything about speeches or anything like that. All I can say is that this is... Um, uh, Yes. All I can say is that this is uh, the market is doing, you know, we had, I said we had a four in one session yesterday. So the move, the 400 point move up was one thing, the 400 point move from the, from the 400 point loss, then the 400 point above that, and then another 400 points, uh, just forgetting the down session, just the up session had three moves. So you can expect one of those to be taken out. Um, maybe it's 400 points, maybe it's not. We'll see. Dow's down 250 right now. Okay, next question I had. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure what the question was about the downside in the Chapman Wave methodology because, I mean, what are we looking at here? This is the downside. Look at that arch formation from peak E and look at the left side, right side price time match. Look at the second arch formation and the 9 is under the 14 and it's still weak. So we're watching this very closely. So I don't know what the question was. I'm not going to go back to the question. 
10 minutes, we've got one segment to go, and I need to look at crude oil. Uh, crude oil is down sharply, down three at 85.91. I'm suspecting that crude oil under this Chapman Wave Inside Track repellent zone is under pressure. At this point, we shouldn't be seeing it higher. It's not. We'll look at natural gas when I eat it. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So this is very important. Um, within the context of the patterns that I look at, let's just do this again because it's really important. Uh, there we are. Within the patterns that I look at, this H, to turn into a successful, and we've seen it before, a successful, and I'll draw it in here just to show you what I am looking at here. Let's just do this, All right? For this to become a cup formation, All right there, even though I made a lower low, it doesn't matter. You need the MACD to continue higher, you need the stochastic to move sharply higher, and very quickly, you need to see the nine period, the pink nine period turn green because it goes above the 14 period moving average. Then all of a sudden, this dreaded H becomes a very successful cup formation. And all you're doing is you're looking at the left side high. What's the next left side high? Uh, if we can take out the 30,454 high of uh, early October, well, that'll be this one right here on the 21st of September, 31,020. Just step by step. There's no, 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 nothing to uh, you know, fret over. This, you got everything's in front of you. So, okay. 
Uh, I needed to do one thing before we wrap up, and that is to show you that the dollar, look at the, rate, the relationship of the dollar, DXY, there it is. The dollar has had a, a bit of a pullback. It could be making a peak A. Now, this is normally where I didn't want to make it too messy. I would normally put a down arrow, but that nine period never, even though the price went under the 14, the nine didn't go below the 14. So the dollar is still active and acting very well. Even on the weekly chart, yeah, it's sitting there looking like it could be a do doji top for next week. But what I would normally do, and I want you to say that, but right now, fighting to pat. It's taking a little too much time on the right side, but there's a, a potential for a peak A failure. And if that's not the case, then we're looking at, this is the two fighting patterns and the, fa the, the, the bias right now is to say that it's walking the 9 and 14 period moving areas so the dollar is still good. What I want to see by the end of the day, the dollar